The leading Apex classes can help reduce technical debt and remove conflicting code, but the leading code in production is impossible if you don't know the steps. In a sandbox, we can simply use the UI to delete desired code. We can access this in the Apex Classes menu in Setup, but in production, these options do not exist. This means we need to use backend tools like the Metadata API to perform the deletion. The fastest way to do all of this is using the command line, but I'll show you three ways to delete Apex code. These methods range from UI friendly to terminal only. But before we jump into these methods, I wanna talk about why you want to delete your Apex code. There are three main reasons, code coverage, technical debt, and deployment conflicts. Deployment conflicts are simple. If your code overwrites existing features, the only path forward is to delete the old code. But one mistake I see many orgs do is leave unused code sitting in production. This can cause two main issues, confusion on what the purpose of the code is and future deployments failing because of test coverage. Great documentation would clarify what the business requirements of the code was, but there is no guarantee this documentation exists. Additionally, business requirements change. Code that was once useful may be blocking future deployments. As for test coverage, this is straightforward. There is a test coverage requirement of 75% across all Apex classes. This is measured in lines of code. Additionally, all Apex triggers need at least 1% code coverage. Let's say you have two classes of equal size. There's an unused class with code coverage of 50%. To achieve org-wide 75% code coverage, you would need to have 100% code coverage on the new class. Additionally, Apex triggers have the option to be marked as inactive. While this can be useful in temporary situations, this is not a long-term solution. Inactive triggers still count against your code count limit, and they can't be tested. If you aren't using your code, delete it. And if you're worried about needing it down the line, that is what Git is for. With that out of the way, let's get to deploying code. All of these deletion methods revolve around using the metadata API. This is a system that allows us to interact with things like Apex classes, triggers, pages, and more. The first way of interacting will be the UI only. I have the code opened in VS Code, but this can be done anywhere. To start, let's organize our deployment package in a folder. We can do this by creating a new folder. From here, we need to create a package.xml to specify that we are making a Salesforce deployment. This is a blank package.xml specifying the version of the metadata API we want to use. Next, we want to make another file, destructivechanges.xml. Keep in mind, this is case sensitive. This will contain the list of files we want to delete. In this manifest, we can specify classes by grouping metadata like Apex classes under a types tag, specifying the type of metadata with the name tag, specifying what metadata will be deleted using the members tag. This can be repeated for any type of metadata you need to delete in production. We can use the standard zip tool based on your operating system to create a deployment.zip. Keep in mind we want to zip the files together and not the containing folder. From here, we need to deploy this metadata package. The easiest way of performing this is using the free tool Workbench. We can log into our production org, go to migration deploy, upload zip file, check rollback on error, set a test level of run local tests, next, and deploy. This will run and delete the desired classes you are looking to remove. We can see the results on the next page. But if UIs and third-party sites aren't your jam, we can use the Salesforce CLI to deploy the same changes. Ensure you have the SF CLI installed and you have authenticated with your production org. Then run the following command on the authenticated org. The metadata dear flag can be used to specify the zip file we previously made. And while the previous examples are great for one-off deployments, we want to align our deletion process with our git commits. We can generate these exact same files using the popular plugin sfdx git delta. This plugin created by Sebastian Colodon allows us to generate the files needed to work with the metadata API. Before we use the plugin, we need to install it. We can run the following command. This plugin works by comparing the differences between two Git commits. The files we created by hand earlier are now automatically generated and ready for deployment. 
To use, we need to start in our Salesforce project. We then want to delete our files and commit the changes. From here, we can use the following command to generate the outputted files. This will generate the desired destructive changes inside the destructive changes directory. This works by looking at the commit we just made to the previous commit before that. This will generate the desired destructive changes inside the destructive changes directory. Now, we can deploy these changes to prod using the following command. Notice how we can specify the package.xml with the dash x flag and the destructive changes using the post destructive changes flag. And that's three ways you can use to delete Apex classes in production.